This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Currently on No Other Pod. It's the uh, the Teal Tots, Teal Boys, Teal Teal Teens. That's what we'll call ourselves. Daniel Kuzer and uh, Chris Wright, man, the Teal Teen Titans. What's going on, baby? I feel like you come up with a different name every single week, and I, I love the creativity. I couldn't do it. You put me on the spot, I got nothing. So stuff, dude. The, this out. brain, I don't know what's in it. It's uh, some stuff just comes out. I don't know. <laughs> Weird. Hey, it's, we it's got magical. a hell of a. It's magical. We got a hell of a uh, uh, a feedback from a guy from work uh, at my job, and he comes to my desk, and he says, uh, "Hey, I listened to your KC Current podcast last week." And I was like, oh, no shit. Th- thanks. You know, what do you think? He's like, you know, I was pretty lost. I don't know the team. You know, I'm new. Uh, I don't know the players. But I will tell you, uh, you and Chris, they, uh, uh, you have a good, like, chemistry. It sounds like a good uh, friendship that you guys just kind of gel together or whatever. And I was like, well, that that's going to make us both feel real damn warm and fuzzy. Thank you so much. It does. Uh, my heart. Then he asked if you, you know, if you were like related to Nick Wright, you know, the, uh, the oh, okay. broad analyst guy. Uh, I don't know what he does. Fox stuff, right? I don't, yeah, some okay. major network now. I, don't, I said, Fox. no, he's he's just a regular like me. We're just re- just regular guys. <laughs> so, nothing special. Nothing, nothing special. special. But hey, it was nice, man. And it's cool to get feedback like that out in the wild. You know what I mean? Um, it's just, I don't know. It feels good, right? I will tell you, we've got a couple uh, couple reviews these past couple weeks. Uh, there is another one on there for the sporting side. You guys don't have to look forward to hearing me read that uh, next week. So, good feedback as always, man. Life life is good. What is the what's the word? Any uh, we we trading you to another podcast? You going anywhere? Any trades that you heard of? I don't know if anybody wants me, um, but my, I, I keep my eyes open though, just in case. You're expensive. You're expensive. I am pretty pricey. I'm fancy. Um, man, just right before we started to record, it was announced that uh, Loetta, Alex Loetta, was traded to the expansion team, Bay FC. Um, and the current will receive 175000 in allocation money and protection in the upcoming expansion draft. What are your thoughts? What does protection mean in the upcoming expansion draft? How are we receiving protection? What's that mean? That oh, means we won't get. They yeah, can't pick they won't. Us. Yeah, they won't take from us for the rest of the. Why? So I like that, right? So that's nice because expansion draft can really break hearts, crush dreams, that kind of thing. But uh, it seems like a great uh, uh, deal, I guess. Um, I I worry because I think she was a really good player. Um, you know, was really doing well for us. The the assisting everything. So I, I it's always interesting, like. When a trade happens, it's usually one of two reasons, right? Either they're just not cutting it for us and we got to move them, we got to get them off the books or something, or the player requested it. So I'd be I'd be interested to know what which one of those it was. You know, we could speculate all day. We do know she's very much in a public relationship with Chardonnay Curran. And uh, as far as we know, Chardonnay is still with KC, so it's... Uh, it's interesting. I don't know. Are they still together? What, is that is that part of it? Did they break up? And she's I, like, I got to get out of here. I, I will not contribute to the gossip. We need but, to find out, gossip girl. <laughs> but what I will say is I, I know that Loretta had, has a relationship more than just on the field with a lot of the ownership of, of Bay. So you and we actually talked about it earlier this year. So we knew that Loretta would be a target from Bay FC. Um, I think we actually threw out the idea of trading her or what we think could happen not what we want but what could happen um that we could trade her to bay fc for protection um we had no idea in terms of the money involved now one hundred seventy-five thousand is not an insignificant amount so we traded um and we'll touch on this later on with with michelle cooper and lynn and the lynn williams trade but we traded 200 grand in allocation money plus a pick and and a goalkeeper Kelly Rowland for Lynn Williams. So, and then this past year, um, Angel City traded 250000 I think, for uh, Alyssa Thompson in the first overall pick. Just to put that $175,000 in, con- in context. 
So I think it's a significant amount of money we got for Loetta. It sucks. She's incredibly creative. I mean, she's grown before our eyes and become a, a, a really effective contributor. She plays so many different positions. Um, you know, one of the best crossers on our team, but no doubt. can't keep them all, man. We can't keep it. It is what it is. This, this sport is always full of heartbreak. Uh, it's, it's not a sport where you can play your entire life like a, like a baseball pitcher. I feel like those, those guys can just get as old as they want, you know, and then get, yeah. or people that move into a designated hitter slot, those guys just get old and powerful. But, uh, soccer is a young, young player's game, man. And it's, uh, yeah. She, she's not old by any means, so it's interesting to see see this movement happen uh, at this point in time. But that's the off season, folks. Them's the breaks. You know, it's just people move, people move on and stuff. You know, it's worth I, noting we could still lose two more players to Utah, so we could technically right. still lose two players to Utah, um, which is better than four. Well, we can't lose more than two overall. Oh, okay. But so we could still lose a total of two. A total of two. Sounds like we need to cook up another trade. The Utah. <laughs> Get some allocation that's a, money. That's a great clause, though, by the way, that you could just that you can put that on top of the trade. Yeah, if you could just stack that on that you cannot take from us, like that'd be great. Yeah. That's dope uh, as hell. It, it it takes all the uncertainty and, and stress out of that that time period. So. Yeah. Seriously. Um well cool, man. It's it's you know, it's silly season now. Off season's here. We had a champion in in the NWSL championship, right? Um, I think it just needs to be mentioned. The uh, Gotham FC, you're welcome for allowing you into the playoffs, right? You're welcome for Lynn Williams, right? They they weren't even supposed to be in the playoffs, buddy. If we would add, you know, one more goal or they had one less goal, they don't make the playoffs. So here they are winning the whole damn thing, and it's uh. Pretty wild how things work out sometimes. Uh, gut wrenching to see Megan Rapino go down so early in the game, like the sixth minute, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Not the way you wanted to see that uh, championship game pan out, but it is what it is, man. You wish for the best, and that's that. Yeah, it was a fun game, though. I mean, it was back and forth, and and I mean, it was kind of a heavyweight fight. Got them and went a up goal- early. A goalkeeper had to be. Subbed out later on? Yeah, in like the 97th minute, um, the goalkeeper, a ball came over the top to Elise Bennett, former current player, and the keeper was right on the edge of the box, and she went and grabbed it, but her hands were like a foot outside the box. So she got a she got an immediate red card, free kick, Oof. right outside the box. Gotham was up 2-1 on the dying breath of the game. So it was... Dude, who, you know the person wild. they put in goal. Because they had no subs left, right? To make a goalie substitution. Right. So, I don't remember who they put in goal. But whoever that person is, you're thinking, oh my God, don't equalize this game and then play another couple of 15-minute halves with me in goal for a potential penalty shootout with me in goal. <laughs> I would be losing my mind. Like, I don't play here. This is not me. <laughs> well, what's crazy is she actually had a play goalkeeper earlier in the year with for another type of situation so that that was her second time playing goalkeeper but playing it in the finals i mean could you not imagine more of a stressful moment for a field player so scary dude it's uh buddy it's so similar in in high school football i remember coach varsity football coach pulled out a linebacker and he's like god just get give me anybody give me anybody and i go right here (laughs) <laughs> and I was, uh, you know, I was O-line, tight end sometimes, and I'm like, here. And he throws me in at linebacker. And I'm like, I have no idea, like, what I'm doing. I don't know the defensive plays because I play offense. And I play one play, I don't hit anybody, and I get pulled right back out for an actual linebacker. But I had a single play at linebacker, and it was horrifying. I imagine that 10 times worse as a goalkeeper when you're not a goalie. <laughs> That, that's all the coach needed to see was that one play. And he's like, bring him back in the linebackers. No more. Yeah. My buddy was the defensive captain and he was, you know, he's calling the play and he, he just, he says, go hit somebody. I'm like, all right. All right. I, <laughs> I was so scared, man. <laughs> but when coach says, give me anybody, give me a body. It's like, fine. 
you know, I'm I'm JV All Star over here. I don't play much varsity. Let's go. <laughs> I imagine it's that similar situation, though. Hey, if it gets me, you know, if it helps the team, like let's just let's go. So more power to them, though. Congrats to Gotham. Uh, a couple of couple of ex uh, KC Current players on there. So good times. Did you see that? You know, just real quick on that game. Did you see the run by Mitch Purse in the first goal? Like basically, no, I, he, like two or three. I didn't get to watch players. Unfortunately, I, I had uh, a thing. She made an incredible run with a couple of moves, juked the players out of their their cleats, crossed the ball in. Who was waiting? Lynn Williams, right there. She didn't really look like she did work for the goal, but she was right place, right time, knew where to be, and just put a foot on it. That's all she had to do. Um, wow. Mitch Purse was the MVP uh, of the game, well deserved. But it was it was a great great time. Outstanding. That's outstanding. Good for them, man. Uh, you know, about 25,000 people there in the stadium. So uh, if you're familiar with Children's Mercy Park, just know that that's more than a sold out Children's Mercy Park for a women's final. I, I think, you know, you can't beat that attendance. Good for them. Uh, especially being on big CBS as well. A little exposure there. Pretty, uh, pretty exciting, man. So, I mean, just to kind of, I don't know, is there anything to really break down outside of that? Uh, uh, we, what we did. did re-sign Gabby Robinson. Oh, I meant for the championship oh. game. Is there anything else to break um, down there? Not really. I think I think we covered it all. Yeah. Uh, and the the fun highlights. I think so. But Gabby Robinson, dude, let's uh let's get back into that. Um, right after this break. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. So I'm gonna tell you a little something right now. I uh buddy, I bought an electric guitar because it's, you know, when you're pushing 40 years old, you gotta find a, a hobby. Uh <laughs> no, so I, just trying to enhance my musical skills as well for uh audition for School of Rock the musical. And I tell you, man, those strings, if you got little baby fingers, like you they say you gotta work up your calluses, you know, and it takes like two to three weeks to do that. Um it's just, it's wild. I haven't played in about 10 years when I was in Hairspray uh, and play a little bit in there, but it's uh, its not for the faint of heart with little little non-working man fingers, you know? Forget those white collar fingers right there. Kinda, yeah. You ever play an instrument? Nope. Yeah. I stay away. I t- my brother does. Uh, he plays drums and guitar and he's pretty good. I don't touch nice. it. I'm terrible. So while well, I assume, I mean, you had to do music of some sort when you were younger, so were you forced into choir then? I mean, the only memories I have was probably just lip syncing everything I had to do because I couldn't sing and I didn't want to. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I just, I, I played cello. Uh, look at Nick played cello. Look at that. Okay. Cello. We're cello bros. Uh, it's, that it was good, man. I liked the cello. And then when I became a, a music education major in college, they made us take literally every kind of instrument class that there is. I'm talking, I was playing the brass instruments, the woodwinds, the strings, the percussion, everything, dude. You need someone on chimes? I'm your guy on chimes. It's insane, man. Tambourine? I got that shit. I would like to do a cowbell and just do a Will Ferrell skit. I can probably do some cowbell. Man, we used to have to play, like, I don't know what those are called, cadences or something on the snare and and we, you had to go in and like you never knew what was going to be picked for the exam. It was always like a surprise one. They'd be like, play number nine. And you're like, all right. It sucked. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> it was a hard, dude. So more power to snare drummers for sure. Uh, anyways, got off on a tangent there. Fingers hurt. I'll get better. It'll be fine. Uh, Gabby Robinson re-signed a, a, signed a new three-year deal, man. She'll be with the club through 2026. Yeah, I think. Big deal. Um, According to Vladko, Gabby is a great young talent. She has the tools to be one of the club's defensive cornerstones, and he's excited to watch her develop. So I kind of echo that sentiment. I mean, when she came in, 15th overall pick, she was partnered up with Ball until Ball got hurt, first game. And then Croy Soto, who having two young center backs, that was a disaster for our back line, but in that disaster, she gained a ton of experience and got better every game. 
And at the end of the season, she did not look like a rookie at all. Do you think she was expected to play as much as she did? No. I don't yeah. think that was the plan at all. That's wild. I mean, just, hey, so this contract, she earned it. Absolutely. I mean, she put in the sweat, dude. The the physicality, she she earned this three-year deal. So, And I think that's the club showing their commitment and thanks. Like, hey, thanks for putting this team on your back at times. You had to step up and play not like a little 20-some-year-old or whatever. You know, you had to step up and be a freaking monster back there when 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 our monsters were out injured. <laughs> I mean, her first game, she, had to, she was going up against Caroline. Her second, Sophia Smith. Can you um, imagine? Yeah, it, it, I think she actually gave up a PK call in the second game. But, I mean, we did not set her up to be successful throwing her in there right away like that. She, it wasn't fair. No, she was thrown in the fire. She grew from it. She's like, I'm very happy with how she turned out. Um, yeah. You know, she played, what, 20 regular season games with 19 starts and totaled 1,701 minutes uh, for the current Um she led all NWSL rookies in blocks, interceptions, and clearances. And third in games started and fourth in minutes played. So cool. Experience, man. Just in and, and one quick note on her. We have we don't know what's gonna happen with ball, but we do have two international players who do, you know, play for their national teams often. We can't just rely on international players because they could be gone for some of these games. We need to have somebody who's gonna be there hold it down and, and be that player that, you know, we can just throw in if any other player is either injured or doing national, doing national team duty. Yeah. So I'm happy for her, man. I, you know, the whole year it was hard to be, it was hard to be critical of her because you knew she was, she's new, right? It was like, she's stepping into a role. She probably didn't think she was gonna have to hold. So it's a, uh, it's exciting. And it might be, yeah, it, it's, I wanted to say it was her spot to lose, but, then she kind of did lose it when when we she did lose it when we signed Balasager and uh, you brought in L- Lauren uh, Elizabeth Ball got healthy so it's defense is going to look interesting next year uh, be a little battle among positions there yeah absolutely. I mean a lot of depth though something we did not have last year so we went from a weak position to an incredibly strong position I like that man I like it uh, cool should we touch on Teal Tuesday let's touch I let's mean touch. We- we got a little excited last week when we talked about a, a vegan taco. Oh my goodness. So let's follow up a vegan announcement with a butcher announcement. <laughs> no, uh, I'd rather have it that way, by the way. I'd rather have the vegan announce first and then like a butcher shop. But uh, Local Pig, which has been highlighted on the Food Network's diners, drive-ins, and dives for its pork offerings. Um and it'll be, they're already saying it's in the northeast corner of CPKC Stadium. We'll have four staple sausage links on a rotating basis. Your barbecue brat, your jalapeno cheddar, your beer brat, and all beef hot dogs. Wild. What's, what's more it, American than a hot dog in a stadium, right? Like Not much, man. It's going to be better than the majority of the hot dogs around the any other stadium, right? I would imagine. Look, so. this is like the stadium is going to have all local offerings. Do you know how weird that is to even say? Everything you could ask for, they're going to have something. There's something yeah. for everybody. They're real. What are you it. feeling? You feeling tacos today? Nah, I'm feeling more like a sausage, bro. Like it's, it's all over the place and I love it. And it's not just like some random catering company putting this stuff together. It's local businesses that you know and you love. You've visited before. You're like, oh, I went to local pig today. Oh, really? Down there in KC? And you're like, no, no, at the Kansas City Current Stadium. Like, what? It's pretty cool. And there's still more announcements to be made. So Hell more, man. They've already killed this whole thing. Uh, and there's still, I don't know, quite a few announcements. To I mean, all the way through December 19th or something, right? Yeah. Every Tuesday. They've I, I'm just, every week. It's it's incredible. I'm just like, how big is this stadium again? We just keep announcing new new offerings. I'm I'm for it, man. I can't so wait to re- get out there. Just one big restaurant? Is there, or are we playing soccer here? I don't know. <laughs> I know we're a good four or five months away, four months away from uh you know, playing again. So it's it's getting exciting. 
Uh, what about, I hadn't heard this, by the way, you just put this in your notes here that I'm looking at, a uh, fun state of fun stadium update with the uh, state of the art LED grow lighting system. Uh, sounds like it's the first sports facility in North America to use LED grass grow lighting technology, state of the art LED grow lighting system. Well, that's a mouthful, but thanks for including that in there. Uh, this is cool, man. I mean, it, anything that's good on energy, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of it's going to be powered by solar anyway, and it's supposed to be better for the grass. It's supposed to be better for, you know, kind of where Kansas is, right? Midwest, a lot of winter weather. Um, it, we, we get everything, right? It's not just like a Southern California. So this essentially makes it easier for the groundskeeping crew. It future proofs kind of, uh, you know, a lot of the innovative technology that's coming in, we're getting ahead of the curve. It just goes to show you that, you know, this front office is not messing around with the stadium. They're not sparing any expense. They're doing, you know, they're doing the best, most sustainable, most innovative technologies they possibly can. And it's here for a women's stadium, not an MLS stadium, not a football, women's soccer. You always hear about the uh, the women players and and all players, really, complaining about playing on turf. And I think that translates among other sports as well. You hear the football players yeah. talking about that too. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a grass stadium here. I think people are going to love coming to play here. It's going to be a game changer for sure. And these grow lights, man, it's, uh, it's important year-round maintenance and everything. Yeah. Especially if they do, like, if they happen to do concerts and stuff here too, like, that can be rough on the field. So you kind of got to do it, any tricks you can to keep the maintenance up. Yeah. Yeah. Like like you said, concerts and they're going to have probably collegiate tournaments and just a lot of activity on that field. So probably so. They're really I taking care of it. Already, already starting a, a fuel fund uh, in my bank account to save for gas all going up there all the time. <laughs> No, I. That, you would do you got, that. Though. You got me excited. I, I absolutely. Well, you got me excited. I was about to go down that rabbit hole with you, but my God, you were joking. No, we. I know you have a bajillion accounts for different things, but uh, some people just budget, man, and it all works out. <laughs> Dude, we. Uh, man, we also heard about an NWSL media deal, which you alluded to a couple weeks ago. I think we spoke on this. Uh, uh, something was trying to get done with media rights and all that. And, dude, it is with CBS, ESPN, Prime, and Scripps. And it's worth an annual amount of $60 million. Two things. I love that you're going to get more exposure on different networks and streaming platforms. Like, that's great, right? People are going to stumble upon it and be like, oh, what's this, women's soccer? Cool, I'll check it out. But I do hate that it's not all under one umbrella. Like that's, you know, it is what it is. There's pros and cons to it, right? It's going to be more expensive for the consumer. I mean, you yeah. have to have, you know, you have to have uh, what Paramount and ESPN sub- subscription, Prime. I don't even know where to get scripts, to be honest. I don't know what scripts is. I was hoping you'd mention it in this conversation. <laughs> uh, well, scripts owns the ION network or ION network. I don't know if it's ION or I O N, but uh, that's where it's going to air. So I think I've seen Ion somewhere before, but I don't know much about it. I don't even know where to get it. It it just it feels like it's great because they probably got the most bang for their buck cumulatively, right, from everywhere. But four year four year deal, yeah, and two hundred forty million total. Let's put that into perspective in twenty twenty. CBS signed a deal worth four and a half million over three years. That's one and a half million a year. And NWSL said, hold my beer real quick. We're going to have a 240% increase on your bitch ass. Like, that's insane. That's, it's incredible. I We're watching, you know, there are certain benchmarks where we see the league is growing, right? You know, you have a new training facility, you know, have a sure. first women's stadium. You know, you just see benchmarks over time. Throw that away. None of that matters. This, this is, is the benchmark. The biggest one yet. Yeah. It, it's absolutely incredible. Everything else seems so small to this. Now, I know sucks for the consumer, but I think their idea is 
the fans we've already acquired, they're going to find a way to watch. People that are on the fence might drop off. It is what it is, but we're going to find new fans like this, I think. I'm no marketing executive, but it sounds right. It sounds smart. Let's go with that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that money is going to be invested into the production. It's going to be, you know, reinvested into the teams are going to get more money. You know, obviously, because these deals, they can raise the salary cap, you would think. You know, we can pay players more, get better players from overseas. When there's more money around, man, it's, you, we see this with all sports. When there's more money, you know, the play increases. Better yeah. players are going to come over. Better players are not going to leave. Um, so, again, this is a huge benchmark. It's exciting to uh, to be a fan in this time, man. So, and if you're if you're just now hopping on the train, welcome. There's a lot of room for you. Come on on. Uh, the NWSL commissioner, Jessica Berman, said, we've taken great care to ensure our games are discoverable by increasing our reach. I just kind of said that. Uh, in order to expose new audiences to everything that makes our league special without compromising the economic value of our product. This is the beginning of our future, future, future. <laughs> cool, man. 118 matches distributed across Prime Video, Ion Network, CBS, Paramount Plus, blah, 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 ESPN's Umbrella, ABC, ESPN2, all that stuff. Uh, I'm excited. I, you know, I do have all these platforms or at least access to all of them. So I'm not too upset if I had to, you know, it doesn't bother me that much, but I understand how it could for people that don't have this stuff yet. Yeah. And games on ESPN, ESPN and the ABC platform will be in both English and Spanish. So that's another great way to, to reach out to a different demographic. Well, the most games are going to scripts, right? 50 games. I, I, and then the next closest is 27 games on Prime Video. Yeah. That's wild. That's wild. And Scripps will have the, the the NWSL draft as well. Yes. And uh, it looks like they will have, they'll literally have 25 exclusive Saturday night double headers. That's when their games will be. 50 games, 25 Saturdays out of the year. Uh, just two games on a Saturday night. Hell of a deal. It's going to be hard to find where to watch games. Like, I'm going to have to have a, you know, a breakdown. Like, this week, th you know, these games are on this channel. You know, these are on here. Because I, I mean, I don't know. I, we got spoiled with it just being on Paramount and, and True. you know, CBS Sports Network. Well, luckily, there's not a bajillion teams in the league yet. You know, it is growing. Uh, but we, uh, yeah, I'm sure there'll be some sort of breakdown. If not, we'll do the breakdown. We'll do the breakdown for you. <laughs> Fun stuff. I happen to know a guy that likes putting stuff together. <laughs> I, do, I do get a, a lot of odd enjoyment out of it. So. <laughs> that is, hey, hey, whatever floats your boat, man. Uh, playoffs are expanding, huh? They sure are. Um, this is my first I've heard of that. Yep. Next year, it's going to expand to eight teams. So eight of the 14 teams will make the playoffs. I've seen some mixed feedback online about that. Um well, we're adding two teams, right? And two more after that, too, because we're going to have... Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, after these two come in, it's going to be Boston and then one additional team. So in a couple of years, we'll have a total of 16 teams. Yeah, so with half the teams making the playoffs, it, it just makes sense. I mean, that's kind of what, it's what people do. Hey, it could be MLS. We're like, hey, that was a top right nine. Now. That's what it is nine. right now. Half of the teams make it in right now. Yeah, or even NBA does that. You know what I mean? It's not not hard to be in the middle of the pack and still squeeze into the playoffs and make a run. So uh, I'm for it, man. It just means more soccer games. It means more meaningful soccer games. You know what that playoff mentality does to people, that playoff feel. Uh, these teams, they, they just play harder. You know, something's on the line. It's all or nothing. Yeah, I love it. Um, also... Commissioner Berman said we'll, we'll be doubling the number of cameras for all our matches with consistency across every single game. Um, they'll also feed all of their officiating for VAR, so VAR will be leveled up as well. Sounds like a positive. Sounds like they're spending that money to good use. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, anything else there you need to touch on? 
No, I, I think we're good to go. I know we covered uh, media deal, and then we we covered some of the expansion stuff. Orlando did trade. You know, I'm sorry, they traded for fifty thousand dollars in allocation money for protection from Bay FC, um, and Orlando also gave up their eighth overall pick. So we're starting to see just. This week is going to be pretty wild. I know this, we record on Wednesday, airs on Thursday, but you're just going to see a plethora of, of trades from here till, till uh, I think the 20th is when the deadline ends. The expansion draft is on Thursday? Is that what you just said? No, um, when we record, when this comes out. Ah. So uh, the expansion draft is in December, but on okay. the 20th is when the trade deadline ends. So we'll we'll have a really good idea as to kind of what trades happened. Okay. All right, man. This is well, pretty uh, wild. We are going to take another quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to pop into our uh, our special weekly moment that we're going to do for the off season. So stay with us. Come right back. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. And what's happening? I, dude, this is the part where I tell you, go see the Marvels, my guy. Go was see it. It was, yeah, it was great. I had a great time. Just had the best time. Uh, I know a lot of people got that MCU fatigue, and rightfully so. That's your right. You know, do what you want. I am too invested to ever bail on these properties and products. I'm just in it for the long haul until I pass away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But we just had so much fun, dude. The music was hype. The the action was hype. Uh, comedy was off the chart. It was a lot of fun. So, you check it out. I think like, yeah, you know, a lot of people were like, "Oh, I don't like Brie Larson. Is it another Captain Marvel movie?" Nah, she wasn't even my favorite part, man. There was there was so much more going on. So it's not a Captain Marvel movie. Nice. Yeah. Also, I don't know why the hate for Brie Larson. It's weird, but a lot of idiots in their mom's basement leaving bad reviews for uh, women superheroes. It's weird. I don't know why it's, they, they get this blowback, so get a life. That being said, let's move forward to our... Uh, do you got a good name for this? Any good name? Is it a? Is it the player spotlight? Do we do we stick with that? Do we call it the player hotlight? <laughs> we can. Uh, we, just, we went with Nick's suggestion um, for the yeah. player spotlight because we are not very creative and nobody gave us a suggestion that I'm aware of. We are. We are creative, though, and that's what's bad. We're so much better than this. Well, it'll be a floating, a floating title for now. How about that? Uh, floating title. We'll let it float. I will. I think it needs to be known that last week I was under the impression that we were <laughs> doing. You know, shout out to our freaking editing team and, and Nick is uh, doing all this. I thought Michelle Cooper was. We were talking about last week, and you, you just let me go. You just let me talk, and it's like you got to do this, buddy. You got to roll. You got to pull me in. And I feel like you do this. You have the rope and you just go, fuck it. <laughs> you just let go and I'm just off the leash. It's like Thelma and Louise, right? Like we're going off the cliff and you think I'm going to try and pump the brake? No, buddy, I'm going off with you. Like together, we're going right off oh that cliff. Oh my God, this is why I drive. <laughs> <laughs> we are not riding with you. Whoa. Whoa. Anyways, it was bad, man. We did the whole breakdown. And I and then you were just like, yeah, we'll do that next week. And I was like, then why the why did I just say all that? <laughs> it was a good ten minutes too. It was it was good. It was doing our best to recreate that right now. That that's why we you know that's why we do the podcast because we love to talk about it. Oh yeah, it it was a practice sesh. We were just yeah. practicing. It was fun. You know, even the best the best podcasters practice. So, <laughs> well, this week's player spotlight, patent pending, is uh, Michelle Cooper, man. I mean, it makes sense. She was our big flashy draft pick. Um, second overall draft pick in the NWSL draft last year. So what do we know about Michelle? What do we think? What do we think about her this year? Well, we need some context real quick. And sure. take a, a trip down memory lane with me here. In hindsight, it's 2020. So keep that in mind. You know, Lynn Williams didn't even really get to play her first year with Kansas City, right? She got hurt immediately. Never really got a chance to get on the field. Towards the tail end of the championship, she was actually practicing. And there was rumors she could be available, which in hindsight, how fantastic would that have been? But 
just keeping that same mindset, we did not really see her contribute to the team on the field, right? So Cooper in college was, you know, highly regarded as a generational player. Two seasons at Duke, she won the Matt Kerman Trophy as the best female player in 2022. In her last season at Duke, she led the team with 19 goals and 11 assists. Before the draft, um, we had Chris Henderson on, uh, who, who talked to us about the draft. But Who is Chris Henderson, NWSL draft specialist? Yep. The one who uh, gave us a, a good tip off of uh, Spanstra. I uh, wasn't asking for me. I know oh. who he is. I was just asking for the people. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but he has... He had Michelle Cooper as basically the if this was any other draft, she would have been the number one pick in in many drafts. That's how good, true. Yeah, that's how good if, she is. Felissa Thompson wasn't in the draft. Exactly. If she was not in the draft, Cooper would have you know been the number one pick over a, a span of years. So from our ownership's eyes, right? From our ownership's eyes, we have a player who hasn't played, who's injured. We haven't seen her contribute on the field for the current. And we have an opportunity to trade for a generational player. And I think that's what they're looking at. So it's easy to look in hindsight and criticize this trade. You know, and we should have never traded her. Look what Lynn Lynn Williams has done. And that's Mm -hmm. very fair. But we have to go back and look at it from their perspective. Um. I'm not going to criticize that trade. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I know people have done that. Like, oh, look, we just got rid of Lynn Williams and she wins the championship. That's crazy. I mean, both things can be, you know, more than one thing can be right. You know, it doesn't have to be one way or the other. So this is a, this dude, this is a future development thing, man. This is, she's your project. She's who you got on the team to work on and, and create, someone amazing i bet vlatko is like excited for this yeah and the fact that lynn williams's contract was ending this year so we would have not had her for 2024 or or beyond unless we paid her probably a significant amount of money and we don't even know if she would have resigned because sam Hughes isn't playing we don't even know if she would have wanted to stay in kansas City. Yeah. so we essentially traded the you know one year of lynn williams for three years of michelle cooper after seeing Michelle Cooper as a generational player, seeing Lyd Williams not really even get on the field, um, and Cooper came in and trained at the the training facility, so they got eyes on Michelle Cooper, and they made the decision that three years of Cooper is is worth one of Lynn Williams. Makes sense, and some things don't pan out in the in the obvious sense, you know. And when that person you got rid of went to go win a championship, it's so easy to be like, oh, could have been us. But it's like unrealistic to to really think that way. Yeah. And taking a look at some transitive math. So we gave up the 11th pick in 2023 um, to uh, North Carolina, 200,000 and goalkeeper uh, Kelly Rowland for Lynn Williams. And we use that to essentially have one year of Lynn Williams and we use that to trade for Michelle Cooper. So in a very roundabout transitive way, we gave up the 2023 11th overall pick, 200,000 in allocation money and goalkeeper Kelly Rowland for Michelle Cooper. And, and if you ask me, I mean, that's that's a great trade. I don't think any team would have done that if they were proposed with that opportunity. So just kind of a weird way to look at it, but interesting nonetheless. Yeah, totally. Okay. So we jump into her, her season here. I mean, yeah. A little background there for you. She uh we were excited for her, man. She we knew she scored so much at Duke. Like she was she was hot, hot foot at Duke. Hot, hot route. It was just uh, you know, she it was exciting to get her in the team. So uh when she didn't start scoring right away. I think there was a bit of like, oh boy, like what's, you know, where's that, where's that striker attitude? You know what I mean? Yeah. She's also been asked to play like winger and number nine, like all year. She's had to be all over the place. She spent her first in Duke. She spent most of her time as a center forward up top. 
scoring goals. When you're the best player, that's where you go traditionally, right? In yeah. college. So her first two games as a pro, she was center forward. She was up top. It was against two really good teams, North Carolina and Portland. So it did not necessarily go well. And you can't blame her for that, right? It just it didn't go well for the team as a whole. Um, and after that, she played more on the right wing. They kicked her out to the right wing, which, you know, is a, a new position, newish position for her. Um, you know, and transitioning to a professional. That's a lot to throw out a young player to immediately different position. The pressure's on you. You have high expectations. Um, and, and through those, you know, ever since then, I think she's kind of grown into that right wing position. Um, it has more flexibility and freedom, uh, for her to kind of use her pace, use her physicality, use her creativity. Uh, and I think she gained a lot of experience, um, throughout the course of the season at that. Yeah, man. Didn't get her first goal though, till, uh, it was a challenge cup game, right? So not even a league goal, but, uh, and and it was a first goal was a penalty kick, right? That never feels as good. That's like saying your first points in basketball was a free throw. It's like, gosh, dang it. <laughs> Couldn't even pop a three, you know? And, and it was her fellow rookie who got the call, who got the PK call in Spanstra. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, kind of fun. Yeah, they're good good friends too uh, in uh, in the real world, real friends. But it's, it's, you know, all goals, like Nick, producer Nick just said, all goals matter. You're right. All yeah. goals matter, man. It is what it is. But uh, you just, you always wanted more from her, right? I wasn't really, I wasn't, I'm not saying I'm disappointed in her season as a whole, because I'm not. But I'm just saying it, it's, uh, I think I expected more, but in no means am I disappointed. Yeah, I, I think everybody expected more. Um, her expectations were high, right? Like people yeah. thought she'd come in and be the next Sophia Smith right away or Trinity Rodman. And those yeah. are very difficult players to to come in and be compared to and you know we're we're best friends with her now i mean we had her on the podcast we're good buds um she uh you know we asked her about the pressure of coming into a team being you know second pick in the draft and knowing that you're you're taking the place of this national team striker who we just traded to acquire you like it's it's a humbling experience you know, she she felt that she's like, I mean, it's it's an honor, and it's a, it is pressure, and I you know I helped to rise up to it and everything. So it was uh, it, it was cool to see see her speak in that that maturity level um, about it. Absolutely, she she was very just compartmentalized, right? She focused a lot of things out, but was also real and honest and humble, saying she knows she's going to be kind of she's going to be compared to that pick and some other top players, but. At the same time, you know, she's just working every day to get better. And that's what you, that's all you can do, you know? Um, what stood out to me was just how much better she got throughout the year. Even if that didn't show up on the stat sheet, she knew where to be. She knew what to do. Um, you know, she played really hard. Uh, and she was tough and gritty throughout the whole year. Like she never, she never let the, it get to her where, no, we weren't going to make the playoffs, so I'm going to take my foot off the gas, right? That's just not who she is. So it, it was nice to see her fight for everything all the way up until the very end. Yeah, man. I don't um, agree. Some things that stood out to me, some positive things, um, is that her work rate and her work ethic was insane. Like, you watch her off ball, she is everywhere. She's flying all over the field. Um you know, she's a two-way player. Like, she'll go up on the attack, obviously, and then she'll come back defensively and make plays. Uh, that's one thing when I was looking at some stats with other high, highly regarded draft picks that came out as, as a midfielder or a forward is that they didn't have to, to be that two-way player as much as she did. So her stats won't equal a lot of theirs, but she was all over the field more than, than some, of those other, some of those other players. And she really contributed to the defensive side of the ball. Um, it was, and we saw that every time she shouldered somebody to the ground or, eh. you know. The, phys- the physicality of her is, uh, it's another level. And it, yeah. we're happy to have that on the team for sure. Um, you know, she had a lot of offensive flashes to me. Uh, she had the fastest goal in regular season history, you know, like one minute. Um, 
she would often she was often very successful taking on defenders one v one outside the box, you know, with an attack. She made a lot of great plays that didn't actually count. Um, you know, she made a cross inside that just barely touched Weinbrenner, but went to the same place the ball was going. So that assist went to Weinbrenner. She had that volley outside the box that was a goal, but it was called back due to like uh, Hamilton being off sides, barely just something that didn't necessarily affect the play much. But um, and she really puts herself herself in a good spot to to you know get some good shots on goal, but she struggled to finish. And I think that's one thing that she'll get better at. For sure, dude. It's uh, it's surprising how fast she is. I mean, she's not some tiny, you know, petite woman out there with like zero muscle mass that just kind of breezes by people like a slick gazelle or something. She, she, she's got this muscle mass about her that makes her a physical player. But she's also fast. It's like it's a, like a little running back, yeah. right? It's uh, it, it's fun to see, man. She just takes off. And if there's a foot race, I mean, you might be in trouble. She'll she'll beat you. Not to mention she has twenty year old lungs. So <laughs> sorry, thirty year olds, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> it, I know we just touched on it too, but she grew into the right wing um, attacking position as the season went on. She became more and more comfortable. And those were just some of the positive things that stood out to me as the year went on. Um, is that, do you have the same consensus as well? Sure. But with the positives, now you got to jump into the negatives. Now you got to talk about the bad things. So I like that you led us with the good things, but now we got to smash your hopes and dreams <laughs> because I don't, I don't even remember how many coaches we had this year. I mean, it just see, you know, when Matt Potter came in and uh, took over from what's his name? What was, who was Sir Williams? Hugh Williams, yes. Uh, and then Matt Potter gets let go. And we got Hoyer Bloom coming in. Uh, Lee Wynn comes in as an assistant coach. It's just that the inconsistency in that is going to be hard for a player um, to really get to know things. You know, and I think having Vlatko Andonovsky come in and really have full control over this thing, like this dude's going to be scary with how much control he has. And it could be a good thing. Or it could blow up in his face. So I'm real excited to see Michelle Cooper work with him, man. Uh, a little more one-on-one, you know. But with that and her changing positions, it hasn't been an easy year. Yeah. I mean, jumping from college to pros is very difficult. You know, but jumping from college oh. to pros at a different position with different coaches. And the injuries on the team. Like, it's hard to build team chemistry with players if you're playing it, you know, in the midfield or as an attacker and you build chemistry with the players who are helping you feed you the ball, helping you work around the field, and you don't have that chemistry because those same players are not on the field consistently, that's going to be very hard to develop, very hard to get better. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, every position outside of keeper had a, a quite a bit of injuries. And you can even say we had a keeper shuffle situation you know this year as well so it's just hard to get that chemistry when you don't know who's going to be playing next to you you know yeah from week in and week out agreed man uh but to touch on you you said it doesn't translate from college to the pros really and it absolutely doesn't because like i mentioned she she was hot on campus dude she was blasting goals man and just running over people um now she still runs over people, as we see when she hit hits the truck stick uh, a few times. But uh, you know the goals didn't come. You know the attacking prowess that was in college. You know now you're playing against professional athletes, people that have been doing this long longer time than you have. And um, I think she'll she'll I think she'll build off the confidence she earned this year, though, and yeah. have a stronger second year for sure. And and you know everywhere she turns in the media. There's probably comparisons of her and Lynn Williams, right? Even if you try to block it out, it's we're human, right? Some of that's going to filter in. Yeah. And I know she probably tried her best to block it out, but we're human. We're not perfect. And she's only 20 years old, man. 20 years old. That's all, all these other rookies who, you know, we'll talk about who've been very successful right out the gate, you know, outside of Sophia Smith, they're a little older. So 
Yeah. I think Sophia Smith was 19 or 20. Um, but 20 years old, you know, pretty remarkable. And you mentioned injuries too, man. I can't imagine what the team was like as a whole this year. Uh, uh, just not knowing who's playing from one game to the next. Like you don't have a consistent lineup. Not really. Someone might be gone for international duty. It's like, oh, wonder who's playing midfield this week. One, who's playing next to me on the wing? I don't know. Yeah. Next woman up. That's what it is. Next woman up mentality. So uh, it's a lot of adversity this team had to really struggle with, man. And, and not every team has to do that. I completely, completely agree. Um, so, so those are the, the, the negatives of the things I thought kind of hurt her rookie season. I think they're all fair as well. Sure. Um, and I wanted to compare Cooper to some of the current players as well. You know, when I take a look at, um, you know, when I take a look at minutes here, Cooper is third on the team. I didn't do all competitions. I just did regular season. Uh, cause I kind of felt like that was a better judge of things since the challenge cup, we try new things and it's a little harder to kind of pinpoint that. Um, but three goals, obviously that is tied for third, by the way, on the team for three goals. Even though we look at her stats as, as you know, being below expectation, she's still tied for third in goals. A little, little remarkable. Um, you know, when you, we take a look at her, uh, the thought mob rating, which I occasionally look at, she's fourth on the current. So obviously thought mob will evaluate players throughout the game, give them a number um, per game. And she had the fourth highest for the current. So sure. it was Dabinia, Lowe, Kaiser, and, and Cooper. That makes sense. Yeah, that's how I'd rank it as well. Yeah. So the stats might not show up, the goals might not show up, the assists might not show up, but I think the overall product that went into those numbers I thought was better than what the numbers reflect. Um. And then there is a um, analyst website that has stats that are fed in by Opta, which uh, a, a lot of uh, websites use. And it had Michelle Cooper as per 90, the most chances created in open play for the team. Interesting. Um, and Dabinia was very close behind her, but it just kind of goes to show she is creative. She knows how to to use an attack to to you know kind of help set up the team for an opportunity. And and even Vladko mentioned that when he he became the coach. Um, you know he, he mentioned that Michelle's creativity is something that really stood out to him, and that's something they, they need to build on. Yeah, man. It's uh, these this is good stuff. I gotta tell you, this is uh, you really did some some digging here on these things, and uh, I hope people enjoy it. Yeah, um, you know, and, and I also compared her to some of the other top rookies over the past couple of years, like Rodman, Smith, Ashley Sanchez, and Morgan Weaver. And first and foremost, Sophia Smith's numbers out of this world. I almost didn't even want to do it with her in there because everything she does is just significantly above everybody else. But she was pretty comparable with Weaver and Ashley Sanchez um, in their rookie years. Uh, I want to point that out. And those were high draft picks as well. Morgan Weaver was the second overall pick for Portland. Ashley Sanchez was, I think, a top five pick for Washington. Um, and, and she's pretty close to Trinity Rodman in, in things like uh, expected non-penalty goals, um, pretty close on assists. The passing percent, um, completion percent, Cooper is actually, in, in the rookie year, was better than Weaver and Sophia Smith. So, and then just taking a look at the uh, defensive actions, um, Cooper and Trinity Rodman were above everybody else. The amount of effort they put on uh, the defense was was absolutely incredible. And I'm cool. yeah, and I'm taking a look at uh, shot creating actions per ninety. Cooper is actually below Rodman, Sophia Smith, Sanchez, and Morgan Weaver, but barely. Um, and then the goal creating actions, Michelle Cooper is above Morgan Weaver, but below Sanchez. Sophia Smith and Trinity Rodman. So she she's in the ballpark of those players. She didn't quite have the rookie year they did, um, but she does contribute. 
quite a bit that I don't think she's getting full full credit for. And then one last interesting tidbit, and then I'll I'll kind of wrap up the numbers here. Um, just taking a look at the goal and shot creation between Michelle Cooper and Lynn Williams this year. Um, Michelle Cooper, uh, according to fbreference.com, Cooper actually had per 90 a greater shot creating action and a greater goal creating action per 90 than Lynn Williams. So it just kind of backs up the story that she was creative, she was effective, but just couldn't quite get on the stat sheet in the way that we all expected her to. It's, it's you know, there's always another season. She's literally not even old enough to drink right now. So, like, yeah. when you say the, the sky's the limit, I mean, she's very young. Most pe- people that age are still in, uh, still finishing college, like, at university. So, uh, just so much left in the gas tank, man. It's not like, you know, we just, she just came here. You know, has a hell of a rookie deal. I assume if she shows some promise, maybe they'll restructure that deal at some point. And um, I'm excited to see what what the future brings now that we're, you know, getting weapons around her and uh, coaching, new stadium. Everything's going to change. And then uh, I'm going to leave you with a couple things, and then we'll we'll we're going to wrap up this uh, Michelle Cooper conversation. But a couple of reasons to be optimistic, obviously with Vladko coming in, more stability uh, at the coaching position can provide her better direction. Um, she played 2020 minutes in all competitions. So you want to talk about a wealth of experience in her very first year. Over 2,000 minutes will do it. She's been able to learn from some successful veterans like Vanessa DiBernardo, Gatra, Dabinia Lowe, um, kind of in that midfield. And uh, also Hamilton as well when it comes to, to to IQ on the field. Hopefully next year we'll have less injuries, so she'll have more or better team chemistry. And then, I mean, she flashed a lot. If she can just finish some of her opportunities, her whole narrative will flip completely. Um, and then really just kind of in conclusion, just kind of when I took a look at the whole body of work, what I saw when I watched her, when I dug into the numbers, she had a decent year. It was below average with her eye expectations. Um, she didn't even have the most goals as a rookie. Uh, I think Messiah Bright had the most goals as a rookie. Um, I don't think she was set up to succeed uh, in a rookie campaign like other top rookies were, um, whether it be this year or last year. Um, and I expect her to have a much better second year. Yeah, no doubt. This has been Chris's Corner. There you go. That's a name for you. That's a name. <laughs> but cool, man. Thanks for thanks for doing that. Thanks for being the numbers numbers guy. Yeah. Let me know if you agree or disagree, or if maybe I'm seeing it differently is, than everybody else. This is the triple C, baby. Chris's chemistry corner. You know, uh, I, I don't. Chris is currently corner. There you go. There you go. Oh, uh, triple C. Cool, man. Hey, we're coming up to time though. Um, We'll we'll get you back in in your laboratory next next week. Uh, don't know who we're talking about yet. I don't want to know. I want you to surprise me, okay? Because that that's more fun. It's kind of where I thrive when you you kind of read off all this stuff and I can react in the moment with you. Uh, that's more fun for me, and I think it's more fun for you as well. Yeah, I like so, it. Uh, cool, man. Uh, anything else for you, for the peeps? Ah, oh, I, I mean, this next week is going to be pretty crazy in uh, for some NWSL news. So pay attention. That's all I got. Pay attention, man. Pay attention. Cool. All right, peeps. Well, we're uh, we're gonna get out of here. We'll uh, talk to you next week. Uh, as always, leave us those five star ratings, ratings and reviews. Apple Podcast, five stars on Spotify. If you listen over there, uh, you can email us noothepod at gmail Catch us on X at noothepod at Dan Couser at Chris Wright twenty one, um, and we will be back next week with some more off-season stuff. Another Teal Tuesday announcement, I'm sure. And uh, more love from your Teal, your teal Team Titans here. So, from, from Chris, I'm Daniel. We love you so much. See you.